Hey guys, we're down here near the main shop, Ultimate Reloaders FFL location. I'm joined by Sam Greer from Phase Technologies. We're gonna talk about getting three-phase power into our main shop. Now this shop right here actually has three-phase power, but the PUD quote would be something like $40,000. Sounds right. To get power run, and then I still have to put in a panel, I still have to do all the work. So what I wanna do in this video is let's talk about how we spec out a system, a phase perfect panel, cover what it took to install the complete solution, which is really straightforward. Three wires in, three wires out. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, and then kind of give people uh, a 101 on how to spec out a system for their particular solution and uh, fire up my old 1942 Kearney and Trekker mill. How does that yep, sound? Sounds great. Let's get to it. Okay, so Sam, this is what we're working with here. You know, when I got into the building, this 200 amp panel was feeding the entire shop and the other panel was not energized at right. all. Yep. Very fortunate situation to have a separate 200 amp panel, you know, available completely yep. for three phase. And, you know, if you're building a shop, really good idea to have a 400 amp service go into that building so that, you know, you can do this kind of thing. Yep. Yeah. So. We took this panel, did some repairs on it, pulled a permit, got it energized, and you know, based on this, we spec'd out our system. Now, when you're specking out a system, you know, based on your capacity, here, yep. 200 amp single phase. What what are the what are the typical options people are looking at? So, so typically, when that's done, you know, people are planning for the future. Mm -hmm. You know, they they want to be able to land whatever equipment they want within that available capacity. Mm -hmm. And so you you can't totally fill the panel, right? There's gotta be a margin there, yep. dependent on electrical code, et cetera. And we're, we're pretty tight in this case. So <laughs> our, our PT030 needs 160 amps of steady state input yep. to produce 95 amps of steady state three phase output. Mm -hmm. And so putting a 160 amp load on a 200 amp panel is tight, but we're just close enough to make it work. Yep, and this is probably a common scenario, I'm it, guessing. It's a very common scenario. Is, yep. you know, that's the standard currency and current for a, yep. a, a regular single phase kind of environment, that sort of thing. And so, yeah, we decided we'll get this panel lit up. We'll, we've got a 200 amp breaker there, and so that's gonna be hopefully enough for yep. what we need yep, here. Absolutely. And I'm guessing the the pull on this panel is gonna be proportional to the loads that we're pulling three phase. Yes. More yep. or less. Okay. Yep. Okay, so pretty straightforward. We're gonna punch through the wall with our output, heavy gauge wires, and that goes out to our PT030. Let's go check that out. All right. So this is it, 030. Our 200 amp panel is right behind this uh, meter right here. And we hung it. We had myself and one other person lift it up here on the wall, got our lags preset and just hung it. And then uh, four lags total, really super straightforward hanging process. And then if we open it, we can see kind of what we've got going on here. Yep, pretty, pretty simple installation. Two conductors into your uh, breaker disconnect, which is an option on this performance panel. We got our two grounds and our three phases out. So technically, we didn't even have to have that panel there. To, well, pr probably not. No, could have come off of the yeah, yes, meter because, socket here because the PT and everything behind it is protected mm -hmm. by this uh, molded case circuit breaker. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, so these two hots coming right off that 200 amp breaker in the panel. We've got our our ground and our three phase out. And this goes into the three phase panel that we hung on the wall. We can, uh, we can go and take a look at that next. Perfect. So pretty straightforward coming yep. in. We've got our three legs, L1, L2, and L3, plus the ground. Yep. And it's just like wiring a regular three phase panel at that point. Yep, you only have 40 amps for the breakers in here so far <laughs> and with 95 amps for the three phase, you got a ways to go. Yeah, and this is overkill, you know, based on, you know, we've got 95 amps coming in, we've got a 200 amp panel here. 
with I think uh, 42 slots. Uh, but I figured I'd rather have more space and flexibility with a lot of different devices and appliances yep. and stuff and that kind of thing. So, you know, the nice thing is I could take this panel and I could take the PT-030 with me. Yep. You know, if we if we move locations, uh, this panel is about $500. And so, you know, it's an investment that you want to make once, right. ideally. Yeah, We've absolutely. Got flex coming off of that, so really easy to run circuits, which we ran two, as you can see here. Uh, one of those being the uh, the five horse, but uh, you know before we go and do that demo, why don't we talk about a little bit of the specking and sizing considerations? Sure, cool. Okay, so let's recap here for a moment. In the first video, we covered this in a little bit more detail. Specking out the system, uh, approach one, size to available power. Size which is to available power. Just what we did here. Yep. yep. Plan planning ahead. Yes. You don't, you don't know what you're going to land in the shop. Yeah, I've got one five horsepower motor going right now, but I've got CNC equipment on the way likely in the next yep. year. Yeah, it's kind of like buying a dually turbo diesel truck. Yep. And you might be towing a utility trailer, but you know that fifth one. wheel is going to be there yep. somewhere. Yeah, yep. exactly. Uh, but then you could have a 400 amp panel and decide I've only got 10 horsepower I'm ever going to need mm -hmm. and do that. And then yep. you could also run two in parallel, right? C so certainly. Yep. Need another 10 horsepower, all right? We'll do another output panel and that kind of thing. Uh, so we sized to available power here. I want to get as much out of this 200 amp source panel as I can get. Uh, so we've got 200 amps in. Uh, we need 30 horsepower output because that's the most, <laughs> the most that we can do. 160 amp continuous draw, worst case scenario with everything turning. And that's going to, I think, you know, handle everything that we're going to need here. I don't envision anything no. kind of bigger Hopefully, than that. or you're going to have to call the electrical yep. company. <laughs> exactly. So let's nerd out with the graph. This is on the Phase Perfect website. This is actually a part of the, the manual, is yep. it? Yep. The, these are toward the back of our, our owner's manual. And if you know a little bit about your loads and, and the current draw during startup, the, these can be helpful in, in sizing one of our Phase Perfect products if you're if you're really tight, if you're on, on the margin, gotcha. or it's a really yep. hard starting load. Mm -hmm. and, and this is really one of the fundamental differences between our phase perfect and a variable frequency drive. Gotcha. Um, a variable frequency drive is typically sized to a, a pretty tight margin, mm -hmm. but because you can across the line start a motor on the output of our phase perfect, and our phase perfect has to handle that, mm -hmm. we just have massive, massive IGBTs and current handling capacity built in. And, and so what these sourcing limit graphs show is that, you know, for a second or a little over a second, this 95 amp rated PT030 will source 350 amps. Yeah, so we're, this, the machine output is relative to continuous load. Yes. And our instantaneous load for things like motor startup uh, are an additional capability, but right. only for a certain time window. Right. Yeah. Okay, so don't worry. If you don't understand all of this, you can reach out to the Phase Perfect team going through the buying process and they'll help you understand all of the considerations based on what you've got going. I think it's time to boot this system up. Let's do it. All right. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn on the 200 amp breaker. So now the panel out there, the PT030 is energized. Service disconnect is on, so yep. it's booting up right now. And then we can also flip this breaker on if we happen to have that off. You hear the click out there? Yep, that was the contactor pulling in. I hear the fan spooling up. And we've got our circuit on for the horizontal mill, so why don't we uh, check out some machining this, action? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay, Sam, this is a 1942 Kearney and Trekker 2H horizontal. She, she's a cutie. <laughs> It needs a paint job, but uh, what a versatile machine. I mean, you can do all sorts of things with a horizontal. I think of it as a heavy cut machine, mm -hmm. typically. Just like in 1942, we've got three phase power coming yep. in. The machine is very happy with that. We're gonna go ahead and start the spindle. Uh, I've just got a piece of scrap in there, and uh, we can go ahead and engage our power feed, and we should be seeing some chips here soon. There we go. All mechanical. There's yep. really no hydraulics on this machine. It could definitely use a DRO. I can see that. I can see that. But you know, you can also use dial indicators and magnetic mounts if you really need to uh, 
check out different dimensions and stuff. I can run coolant on this, it's a little messy, but uh, you know, it's just a, it's a great old machine. Very easy to wire up. Yep, nice to have it powered. Yeah, absolutely, this is super exciting. Well, Sam, I really appreciate your help on this project. You've been Absolutely. right there with me Happy on the to email, with you. on the phone, helping me get spec'd out, helping us with install details, which honestly we could have done from the PDF that you guys supply. That's what we like to hear. Yeah, really good stuff. So if you all want to know more about single phase versus three phase power, the different types of power converters that are on the market and are available to take single phase and make three phase, the last video, the first part of this series is definitely a video to check out. I'm super jacked up about having my machines going down here and can't wait to build on this capability. Now, there is a special deal that Ultimate Reloader has worked out with Phase Technologies. If you mention Ultimate Reloader when you check out and you buy a machine online, you're going to get an additional full year of warranty coverage on your Phase Perfect converter. It's yep. pretty awesome. And if you have more questions, you want to check out the products, go to phasetechnologies.com and click on products, you're gonna find all of the information that you're gonna need there. This has been fun, I'm super excited. If you have ideas for my shop, what kind of equipment I could get now that I have three phase down here, drop a comment in that comments discussion. We can also discuss the different uh, considerations with installing this type of technology and specking it out, that kind of thing. Thank you very much for watching. That concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're watching Ultimate Reloader on TV and wanna take advantage of free resources, exclusives, and hot deals, just hold your camera phone up to the QR code, tap on the link, fill out the information, boom, you're getting Ultimate Reloader emails. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. Thanks again for watching.